Hello, welcome to another Bubble Quick Tip. This one is all about storing logs directly inside Bubble server logs that they make available here under the Logs tab in the Server Logs view. There's different reasons why you may want to do this. A lot of times you're going to create an error log data type and you may have errors in your app or you may have potential errors in your app that you don't necessarily want to store in your database, but you would like to be able to find them. You may simply want to see where they're occurring in the flow of other actions, or you may just want to store all your logs directly in the server logs and not bother with a data type and uh, storing those records in your database at all. So it's not a difficult way to set up. First thing we're going to do is jump here into backend workflows. I've added a folder called error just to keep our workspace clean. Folders are your friend. Let's create a new API workflow and we're simply going to call this error underscore log. We'll uncheck the expose as public API workflow. We don't need that. We don't need either of these other two checkboxes as well, but we do need to add a couple of parameters. So we'll add parameter one will be code. There's normally some kind of a code with an error that is uh, automatically generated in the browser or that you receive from an API request. We're going to make this optional though, so that this does not have to actually be filled out. Second one here will be message. And we're going to make that text as well. We'll make that optional. And let's go ahead and give this a time. And we're going to give that, make that a date field. And we'll make that optional, but we'll fill this out every time we use it. So that's all we need for now in the back end. Let's go ahead and create a new page. And we're going to call this error underscore log. We'll keep it consistent with how we're naming things on the back end. Let's drag a button out here. And this is simply to trigger this action so we can look and see that it is in fact creating errors that are searchable in the logs. So we'll say create error. We'll say start at a workflow. In this action, we're simply going to schedule an API workflow. We're going to find that error log API endpoint. We're going to schedule it for the current date time. We're going to make this time uh, current date time as well. And then let's just give it a random code. We'll say 2030 is our code for this random error. We're going to just add arbitrary text here so we have a bigger input to work in. And now we're simply going to put the message into the error that we want to see. So we will say this page just created a big fat error and it's annoying the user. And let's say, we'll just say um, the current user and let's just use some dynamic data here. So we'll grab the current user and say, are they logged in? And then we're going to use format as text. We'll say if they are logged in, we'll say is logged in. If they are not logged in, we'll say is not logged in. Okay. That's all we need. Let's preview this. We're going to hit the create error button back into our editor and now let's open up our logs so in our logs click on show advanced we're going to uncheck everything except for the running action option and we are going to put into contains uh, we're just going to say error log and we'll search and now we can see directly here in the server log, just by running that API workflow, we have 
an error log code 2030. This page just created a big fat error and it's annoying the user. The current user is logged in. And then the time that this occurred, September 14, 1234 a.m. Eastern time in the United States. And that's it. You can use that backend workflow to and trigger it from any page. You may even have on your page itself, just say an unhandled error occurs and we're gonna schedule that workflow. Error log, date, time, we're just gonna kind of repeat and we'll say uh, current workflow errors code and then let's just copy this down Let's say current workflow errors message. All right, perfect. Now we can search all these errors. Uh, you can get as cute and uh, clever with it as you like. You can set up multiple of these endpoints if you wanted to track different types of errors. Um, but that's it for now. Hope that's helpful and you guys keep building.